Welcome back to the 2016-2017 NBA preview. Today we are covering the number 8th ranked team in the NBA preview, the Boston Celtics. My name is Josh, your Enviers, and with me today is my co-host. How's it going, guys? It's the king of the fourth quarter. Welcome back to the NBA preview. So the Boston Celtics, a very, very average team last season that was able to make the playoffs, and they did pretty well. They did pretty well. Their record was 48-34. and 34. They were one of those teams tied with the plethora of Eastern Conference team with that exact same record. There was mm-hmm. there was four teams, I believe. It was the Heat, the Hawks, Celtics, and Hornets. Last season was the year of uh, Isaiah Thomas and him making the All-Star team, along with this whole entire team essentially uh, being a team competing in the NBA without one in particular superstar. Like That's what they were uh, going off of last season as well. A lot of people were saying, oh, this team's so fun to watch because there's not that one guy, even though yeah. Isaiah Thomas is kind of... He's kind of becoming the guy, or at least he did last season. Being the 60th pick, is that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I was going to mention how fun to watch this team was, and, and that's one of the great things about them. They have a great coach, Coach Brad Stevens, who is actually really, really good at the X's and O's of basketball. And you can see that on his out-of-bounds out plays and just pretty much his half-court offense. Like, he is a great coach, and that's one of the reasons this team is so successful without a star. They're a better team this year, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the new acquisitions so i guess we could take a look at those new acquisitions the offseason moves for this boston celtics they acquired al horford lost evan turner jared selinger and drafted a whole lot of rookies that i don't even want to begin a name but the most obvious one the number three pick is jalen brown who probably out of all the rookies will get the most playing time yeah the offseason was really good and i actually like the things that they did of course a lot of people in the beginning, at least, when it came to the draft, people were asking, what is Danny Ainge doing? So many picks, they were thinking that they were going to trade for an all-star, whether it be Jimmy Butler or someone else, and it kind of all fell through. They took a step back, drafted Jalen Brown, and offseason, the guy looks aggressive. He was really aggressive in the, the summer league, and he got to the foul line a yeah, There was definitely a lot of rumors with this Boston Celtics team. Uh, a lot of the fans on Twitter saying, oh, we could just trade the third overall pick for DeMarcus Cousins or Jimmy Butler or guys like Blake Griffin. That obviously did not happen yet. So, yeah. uh, unfortunately, to burst their bubble, they got Al Horford instead. He's been regressing the past two years. He hasn't been as good as he was in 2014 and the 2013 season. So, uh, hopefully, he's able to revitalize his career in Boston and maybe play a few power forward minutes because uh, in college, Al Horford was a power forward, and I feel like if they're able to get or trade a few pieces to get an established center and put Al Horford at the four, that'd be pretty interesting. The one reason I personally really like Al Horford coming to this team is that he's not like a one-trick pony. He can post up, he can spot up, and the pick and roll, this guy, he's deadly in all three things. Like you said, his numbers have been regressed in his points per game over the last couple seasons, but this guy's still an all-star, and I think he's going to continue that. Yeah, I feel like now with... Uh, Isaiah Thomas essentially being the only other guy on this team that's going to be putting up major numbers. Maybe Al Horford could finally get back to that 18 points per game or 17 points per game instead of 15. So we'll see. So moving on to the rotation of this Boston Celtics team. Here is the projected starting lineup. Isaiah Thomas, Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder, Amir Johnson, Al Horford. That's a that's a really solid starting lineup if I do say so myself. Uh-huh. The bench looks like Terry Rozier, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jonas Karebko, and Kelly Olynyk. Bench kind of drops off, but it's still it's still decent. We forgot they also acquired uh Gerald Green. Gerald Green, on the, I believe the minimum. Yeah, um, that's 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 not really a standout. He's gonna know, be exciting, player. maybe even though he's getting up there in age. I still think I mean, he'll be did exciting. You, did, you, did, you, did you see him with the Miami Heat? He wasn't that exciting. His his exciting days with the Phoenix Suns are kind of over at this point. I feel like especially with his Boston Celtics, he he won't be getting that much minutes. Actually, no, he might considering they don't really have a backup shooting guard. So we'll, we'll definitely see. But if it's anything like Miami, it's not going to be that exciting. The one thing about their rotation, or at least their roster in general, they have a bunch of really young assets. And they've been pretty much waiting for guys to step up, like RJ Hunter, Terry Rozier, who actually had an OK season last year. James Young, especially. James My Young, God. yeah. Yeah. This guy guys is like getting this no have minutes. Just been on the roster and haven't really turned into great assets yet. So they're hoping that this year it can happen. If not, can, you can probably expect a trade with at least one of them. Yeah, definitely. A lot of teams would love to have these young, talented players on their team and maybe develop them more than the Boston Celtics did, considering the Boston Celtics rotation. That's a pretty stacked rotation. Yeah, and a lot of the young players are right in the bench not getting enough time to start. So maybe with another team, they could acquire 
uh, a nice role player coming off the bench or even uh, replace guys like Amir Johnson or Jay Crowder in the starting rotation. Yeah, if I, was a, if I was a Boston Celtics fan, I'd be extremely optimistic on what's to come for this team because they still have Brooklyn's draft picks. They still have these guys who play hard and they still got the young assets on the team too. So that's that's current and future looking bright for their team. I mean, I wouldn't be too optimistic because, you know, last offseason they said they were getting Jimmy Butler, DeMarcus Cousins, Blake Griffin, Russell Westbrook, uh, Kevin Durant. None of that really happened. They got Al Horford. Yeah, but even Al, adding Al Horford is a huge upgrade to their team. Is, so, of course, is, they, they struck out on the superstars, but Al Horford is still a really solid player. I'm saying be optimistic. Just don't be over optimistic and think you're going to get everybody. Don't be the Lakers. Don't do that. Moving on to the projections of this Boston Celtics team. The Boston Celtics, like we said in the beginning, were tied with four teams in the Eastern Conference with the same exact record, 48 and 34. Over, under, where do you see this Boston Celtics team being this year? Okay. I'm going to go over. Okay. Of course, they did get better. They, did. they got out Horford. So the number I'm about to throw out here will surprise you, but it's my bold prediction. I'm going to go. We're ready. 56 wins. 56 wins. Better than Toronto Raptors. Better than Toronto Raptors. That's my okay. bold prediction there. 56 okay. wins. You just made a lot of Boston Celtics fans happy. I hope you know that. <laughs> and now now they're going to they're gonna say, I told you so. Uh, when, when I say they're not going to win 56 wins. But I, I don't see this team winning 56. I don't see them being better than the Toronto Raptors. I don't see them being the second best team in the Eastern Conference. They might be in the same situation as last year where they're tied with a few teams in the Eastern Conference. And luckily out of the teams that I've mentioned, I feel like this team took a step forward, but unfortunately teams that were behind them also took a step forward as well, which they might tie this upcoming season. These next three episodes that I'm gonna be covering of the NBA preview, a lot of these teams are interchangeable. So don't hate me for saying this, but I feel like this team could win 50 plus games. 50 is, a reasonable amount this team is still a top 10 team in the nba maybe if they're lucky they could win 52 games but 56 is a lot to hold to this boston celtics team if this team were to get 56 wins that'd be great too because they'd be an elite company finally they've they finally rebuild and now they're ready for a playoff push and try to contend for a championship but as of this year I don't see it happening this year. I'm, I'm gonna go 50. That's still generous. Over 48. So with that said, uh, as you as you can see, we kind of had different opinions uh, for this Boston Celtics team. I think they're gonna be an okay team, and Jerry thinks they're gonna be the second best team in the Eastern Conference, one game behind LeBron James. So that's that's a that's a bold prediction right there. Oh, it is. It is bold, but I I, I feel like it's definitely possible with the roster they have right now. Do you agree with me or do you agree with Jerry? Let us know in the comment section below. Leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it along with sharing it on any social media. It really helps us out. Uh, spend a lot of hours and effort into making this series, so it would be great if you show love into it. All of our social medias will be in the description below for you guys to check out if you wish to do so. But we'd like to thank you guys for watching. Yeah, see you guys in the next video. It's getting down to the good teams and hopefully there's more to talk about. We'll see you then.